election season, some of my friends over at Reason Magazine uh, wrote an article in which they were arguing this is going to be the libertarian year. And I wrote a response to it uh, that was called Adventures in National Socialism. Um, the two candidates that people got really excited about this year, one is a nationalist and one was a socialist, Donald Trump and uh, Bernie Sanders. Um, this is not a particularly libertarian year. It's a year in which the right has turned away from free trade and free enterprise and a lot of that rhetoric. We tell ourselves and we also tell the people we're trying to convince that what people really value is economic advancement, limited government, uh, betterment, freedom. Are we lying to ourselves about this? Depends on who you're talking to. Like, uh, I've got a, a brother that I deal with, he's a Bernie Sanders supporter, um, but he, he's open about the fact that I'm right. You know, he's like, you know, no, 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 the, the argument that you have about how, like, I should be libertarian is correct. He doesn't care. <laughs> he just doesn't care, you know, because he came here as a refugee from Somalia. He came here fleeing uh, the bombed out footprint of a communist state. And when he got here, uh, he got here because the American taxpayer paid for his plane ticket. He lived here because the American taxpayer provided him with food and shelter and clothing. So now to him, the state is like a god. You know, it is what provides him with safety. It is what provides him with sustenance. It is what provides him with shelter. And he openly admits that the system that creates it is wrong and oppressive but he has gotten the good from it for himself and is now unwilling to advocate against it because of the fact that he sees it as the next time these things happen, someone else will need that. The American government's money is what kept me and my family from still being in Somalia and running from Al-Shabaab and from starving to death once we got here. So it sounds good. Maybe if you're cutting you off, but I mean, you get everyone else in there sure. two minutes. It sounds good, but we're, we're kind of lying to ourselves if we believe that the, the good people, the, the profit of the state, doesn't influence people's opinions. No comments. So, in my case, um, I deal with a lot. I don't like Donald Trump. I'm really, really, really incredibly outspoken about not liking Donald Trump because he's not conservative. And I talk to a lot of the conservatives, they're not really paying attention to his policies. It's more about what well, he's not Hillary. And we just we can't overcome that issue. I don't I haven't been able to figure it out. And I don't think any of us in this room can figure out how we overcome the issue of the fact that as long as he's not Hillary, they're gonna vote for him. <laughs> And vice versa. Right. I'm very concerned as Chinese immigrant who survived the Mao's communism and later socialism and really come to America for a free country. I'm very concerned that we end up to be having two choices, and socialism, a liar, and a national, or potentially a fascist. You know, it's all need to, it doesn't matter left or right, you are need to slaughterhouse. When you allow your government to get so big and limited, we all will be basically sheep. So I always, you know, that's why I jump in to run as a libertarian. I use this platform to go out, tell my story, under Chiang Mai Mao, and uh, to, to wake up Americans, don't be sheep and don't be spoiling frogs. You are, if you keep voting for the two parties, you are actively participating in your own oppression. You get those people into office, they're power hungry people, they love to control your life, and they're making stupid laws to regulate you to death. And you don't have privacy anymore. Your kids have no choice in education anymore. They're all being brainwashed as little communists. So, so that's why I'm running. I don't care what is my percentage in the polls or if I'm going to win or not. I think by running, I'm always winning on my messages. I'm going to wake up Americans one at a time and to discover that libertarian spirit in their heart. So I'm hoping you can actually check me out and share my post. It's lilyforliberty.com and the Facebook Lily for Liberty. One point I want to make is that we definitely need a more informed electorate. I mean, they just do not pay attention to policies. And when you bring it to them, like, oh my God, this really affects me. So in Tennessee, we had the gas tax increase. I was like, it's going to make your grocery prices go up. It's going to make everything get more expensive. Like, That's hard on you. So why in the world would you support that? So once you stuff, broke it down and explained it to them in common English, 
They're like, oh, oh my God, we need to do something about that. So we actually had a few churches come out and knock doors with Americans for Prosperity against the issue. So we elect a new people, you're saying. Right? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the microphone and ask a couple questions. We've got time for a few. 